And Sammy D, I just pulled up to uh, Decode, and we about to get into my song, Element, right now. Go. Ready to rumble, you ready to what? Cause I'm finna unload, out here in the jungle, with the heart of a lion, but look like a young boy. They be on they high hopes, I'm usually humble, fuck it, I'm gung go, go get on the dumbo. Don't get it, you fellas, cause I'ma be numb ho. Green light, I'm feeling machine light, tell them living the dream life, my self esteem high. All right, what's going on? We got Sammy D here on Decode. What's up with you, bro? What's good? What's good? What's good? We had to chop it up with you about the song Element. So when I listened to it, I want to say that shit was like full of bars yeah. from the beginning <laughs> to the end. I mean, like even in the even in the hook, you came with bars oh, on yeah. that motherfucker. So I had to listen to it a couple times. What was what was it that you wanted the people to to hear or take away from that song? Um, well, when I think of Element, you know, I think of a happy place, you know, I think of a peaceful place, a place where you can do what you enjoy. So, like, the main thing I wanted to showcase with that song, the song and the video itself, is showing me in my element what I'm the most happiest doing, what I'm the most confident doing, and just what I'm the most peace at, you know, where I'm the most peaceful at. So, that was like, um, and just like the whole th thought process of it was, you know, I, I wrote it during the time of the pandemic, you know, like it was during the, when the pandemic had just started and, you know, like you get laid off and you're just like you're trying to keep the motivation and everything. So like when I was working on it initially, I was just like it was one of those standpoints. I need something to remind myself of like this is what brings me joy mm -hmm. in these times when everything is cloudy, everything is slow and there's nothing is going the way that you're used to. You know, all of this is new for everybody. So like. Um, those few days or weeks that I wasn't working, you know, I would just go in my car, go to my car, and I would just sit in there, I would play the beat, and I was thinking, like, man, I want to do something crazy with this, you know, like, I want to do something crazy, like, I want to try some new flows, I want to try some new flow patterns like that, all in the same way, letting people get to know me through the lyrics of it, you know, it's some, it's some lines in there that come from, like, real-life places, you know, so it was just like, that was the biggest thing, it's just like, this is me feeling good, you know, like that's that's the main gist behind it. Yeah. <clears throat> and that kinda relate back to the, the song title too. Like you yeah. said, you was just in your element and shit. Yeah. And that's kinda dope to hear that you so you was listening, you actually wrote the song in the car type shit. Yeah, I, I usually write a lot of songs in the car. Like I because that's a place I look at it like this. My car, you know, you can have your house. But in the house, if you're living with somebody, you know, like a lot of times, you know, they got their thing going on or it's TV going yeah. the TV going on. Or if you live with more than one person, it's just things going on. So when I would go to my car, especially during that time, it was a time it was a place of peace and just like quietness. Yeah. And it was just me, you know, like I wasn't in a store or on a bus or something. I could just fully focus and just like I can rap as loud as I wanted to, you know what I mean? Or try the different cadences that I wanted to because I do that. Like I go through the different voices or try to use my voice to see what I can do with it. Like so being in my car gave me the ability to do just that, you know. So if I want to scream, I can do that, you know. Like, yeah. I ain't got to worry about no neighbors. I ain't got to worry about waking somebody up. And if I want to, however I want to take it, I can do that. So in the car, a lot of times, that is my place where I'm the most calmest, you know. Like, and that's the place where I listen to the most music, too, in my, in my car, when I'm driving on my way to work, or if I got to make a run or some errands yeah. or something. So, yeah, like, that's, that's where that comes from. Like, yeah. That's what's up. I think that's dope as fuck that you wrote the song in the car. Like, a lot of people, they just pull up their notepad and be writing some shit at the crib. I hear people say, like, when they going, transporting to and from work, they write shit on the bus or however they get however they get around. So, specifically for you, um, in those car sessions, what was that writing process like? So, in that in that car, in, in, in that, those sessions at the time, I was working on a project, which the song Element actually comes from, titled For the Whip. You know, so... For the Whip, basically, for me, was supposed to be my shuffle playlist of my own songs. You know, like, if I was to give you my different vibes that I listen to, if I was listening to somebody else, but with my own music. You know, so I was thinking about, I had songs where I was more introspective and trying to be conscious or trying to be romantic, shall you say, or stuff like that. But I was that was the song I came across, and I was like, man, I need a fire one where I'm just... I'm not thinking too much about a particular topic, like, and I could just do a fiery flow of bars, you know, like, so I wanted to do that because I go through these things when I'm in my car, I might shift from rock to R&B to hip hop to 
whatever, you know what I mean? And it all depends on which mood I'm in. So with, when I heard that beat, that's what it brought out of me. You know, like, I just want to, I want to chop this motherfucker. You know, like, I can, I can curse, right? Yeah, yeah, you cool, you <laughs> good, man. you good. <laughs> like, I, I could chop this motherfucker, you know? And, like, I like guys who have, like, crazy choppy flow sometimes yeah. I, I like that sometimes yeah. you know so i wanted to i had never did it before for myself you know so i wanted to see what my take would be on it you know so uh, i went through a, a couple rough drives of it though you know i went through I, I still got it you know like the original because what the finished product was that wasn't that wasn't it you know like i had two completely different verses and like i said because the pandemic was going on and i wasn't sure of where the future was going to end up with everything that was right. going on, I was starting to second guess myself. So everything I was writing, it was just like, nah, this ain't good enough. This ain't to my standards. You know, so it was just like I was starting to lack that confidence a little bit. But, you know, I would, I was take, a, take some time away from it. You know, it took me probably like a day or two to actually get it to what I wanted it to be. And, like, I took some time away from it, and then I ran the beat. And um, once I actually, like, stopped the overthinking and just <laughs> relaxed and calmed down and I ran it back, it just started coming out. You know what I mean? It, it just started coming out and like uh, the hook I already had it in mind that that the, how the hook goes, the element, like I already knew what I wanted to do with that, you know, so like all I had to do was write the verses around it because the hook, a lot of times with hooks, I don't write my hooks. So like mm -hmm. a lot of times um, a hook will come to me just like that. Hooks usually come to me sooner than the verses do what? you know like yeah like hooks always come to me like i could just be chilling or i could just be driving or i could be it don't matter where i'm at i could be sitting here right now we could be chopping it up mm. and if something like strikes me or sparks me like i'll build off it in my head and then what i usually do it, it happens a lot when i'm writing I have other ideas pop in so i could yeah. be working on this and then this come in and then this come in so that i save all of that I voice recorded in my phone and then I go build up on it later. So when I was working on Element and when I finally started to tap into it, I started getting inspired with a whole bunch of stuff because I wanted to do that tape. You yeah. know, I wanted to do that project. So like I was trying to trying to embrace that momentum that I was feeling. You and know, considering so, like that you said you wrote it in the pandemic, um, and then listening to the actual song and now hearing your story about it, it's like it's a reflection of kind of like the hunger you had, yeah, you know for what I'm sure, saying? yeah. The time, even even with the slight moments of overthinking, yeah. and there's so many bars, there's so many metaphors. Do you feel like some of that shit might have went over people's heads? Was that a part of the overthinking, or did you just want to give them you as you? I wanted to give them me, you know what I mean? Like I wanted to give them me as much as possible, but I'm sure that a lot of it went over people's head because a lot of times what I catch myself doing, like I say, if I feel like it's it's not to my standards, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or it don't blow my own mind. I'm just like, I don't use it a lot of times, you know? So in that in that process, when I was writing it and, like, the lines weren't coming out, like, oh, no, nah, I, I don't think this is, like, it's not wowing me, you know? It's not wowing me. So, like, I would scrap that line. Mm. So I know it's a, it's a lot of lines that went over people's head because it's just, like, for myself, like, I complicated it, you know what mm. I mean? Sometimes, like, especially a song like that, like, my mindset is strictly to to show you that I, I'm i cold at this shit. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to be the, the, the most lit. I'm not trying to be the most famous, swag, none of that. I'm trying to show you my element, my inner yeah. child, what the reason I got into this for. Yeah. It, it really represents my inner child. You feel me? Because when I was a shorty, when I didn't have to worry about bills, I didn't have to worry about a job, I didn't have to worry about none of that, I could do just that, you know? So it wasn't no overthinking. It wasn't worried about, oh, this need to get paid, or I got to go to work, or yeah. all of this. So when I was a shorty, I can do that, you know? So that's what that represents to the core. My inner child and what I do and the reason I started to get into this and this became a, a passion, you feel me? That, and that was another question I had, like, how important was it for you to deliver straight bars, which some of that you kind of answered, and I think it can also reflect, too, back to the production, because in the song overall, um, in the music video itself, too, it's like a lot of core elements of hip-hop. Right. Like, not pain music, not right, 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 rap, yeah. not, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, not sure. emo rap, but hip-hop sure. rap. Yeah. So how, how rooted are, t are you into, like, the origins of hip-hop? Do you prefer that sound, or how, how does that kind of... Uh, uh, mold you as an artist. Oh man, like that that's that's dope. Um it's funny that you you asked me that. Today I was watching this this uh documentary, right? 
And they was basically going over the origins of hip hop and the evolution and what it became, where it started. A funny story is like, I'm deeply rooted in the origins because I went back and did the, the research mm. on it. You know, I remember having a, uh, you know, because when I when I when I was a shorty, I grew up listening to what everybody at my age listened to Fifty, Jay, right. Wayne, all of them, right? But it was just like I had this point in time when I came into this, like when I got in high school. I wanted to go back, you know what I mean, and learn what it meant really to be a hip-hop artist, you know. So I remember in class, one of my uh, assignments was to do a PowerPoint on something that you think was interesting. So at that time, with me learning about it, I did the PowerPoint on it, where how it started, where it come from. It started in the Bronx in, in yeah. 1973, and it's only 40-some years old. So, like, in that video... Um, that place had like the graffiti and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Now I'm glad that it was able to showcase that because I I, I do like to do the hip hop rap prim primarily. You know what I mean? Like I like a lot of the the melodic wave now too. Like, but I had to get into that because when I was growing up, I was just like, if it wasn't boom bap, if it wasn't like straight bars, like I didn't like it. You know, so I had to expand my um my mind a little bit yeah. and like realize that it may not be do doing the same thing that I'm doing, but it doesn't mean that it's not good. You know what I mean? I had to actually learn that, like, mm -hmm. and start to be able to uh, accept that. And now I can listen to those guys who aren't barring it out or doing super fast rap or lyrical, technical raps. Like, and that's cool. You know, I can appreciate that. Like, I was one of those guys like, oh, it ain't hip hop, you yeah. know, because I was doing that study, you know. But I had to realize, too, that, you know, these guys are my age, too. Like, who am I to tell them what's not hip hop and what's inspiring them right now? Right. You know what I mean? Like, and what is being innovated and what's being passed to them and what's, what's, um, what they feeling, you know, I yeah. can't be like, oh, because you like this guy, you not hip hop, and it's not what my playlist consists of, you know. A lot of the shit kind of that originated from hip hop, it was always about like who had the best bars, you know. It right, wasn't right, really right, too right. much, like you said. I'm not trying to be the most lit. It's like everybody in, in the origins of hip hop was really just trying to deliver bars, talk about the shit that was going on around. Absolutely, them. yeah. And so like, it's not uncommon for people to listen to melodic rap and be like. You know, that's not rap. But as you said, everything has kind of like a purpose and it all serves a different audience, even if it's not meant for you or if it takes time. For Absolutely. You to grow on and, to it. and like I say, I had to really uh, open my mind up a little bit to see that, you know, and yeah. like my surroundings, you know. So if I'm around guys who just listening to Nas and Biggie and Tupac all day, like that's that's what I'm 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 listening to. Right. That's what I'm I'm agreeing with. So I get around some people like and they like this new guy and they like this new guy and it's opposite of that. I'm like, no, nah, I can't relate to that. But then being around guys and in in the same social circle as me, you know, and they like do a song with me, Sam, or something like that, and they may not do what I do, but they make good music. So what I have learned how to do is be I tap into my verse, yeah, my versatility. versatility. You know what I mean? Because Adapt like, it's shit. it's not that I can't do those things. It's just like, this is what I fell in love with right here. This one over here, but I can do this too. You know what I mean? Like, so I can accept it all now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now that I'm older and I'm, you know, I'm a little more mature in that aspect. And you know, like just realizing everything is subjective. You know, like this person may like this, but this person may like this. It's just you think about stuff like. PlayStation, Xbox, like it's gonna have its core fans. Yeah. Like this one gonna like this one over the other, but it doesn't mean that it's not a good product. You know what I mean? It's Absolutely. a market for everything. Yeah. You feel me? So that's what it boils down to. Yeah, that's yeah. dope to hear you talking about embracing different types of uh, yeah. and forms of hip hop. So to move on a little bit um, on to the video for for Element, take us back to the day of the shoot. How how was that for you? Uh, the day of the shoot, like um, it was a little gloomy outside that day, right? But you know, I liked it because it, it kind of set the tone. Like, you know, like that day, like when we got to the place and everything and uh, shout out uh, Mac Films, that's my homie, you know, like. He went crazy on that yeah, one, yeah, like, by the way. He like, went he crazy. Been, he been doing a lot of my videos, you know, like we go back to like high school and all that. But uh, we get there, you know what I mean? And we ran some ideas with each other. And one of the biggest things I wanted to get was those. And if you watch the videos, the papers. Now, what a lot of people may not know 
if they didn't catch it. Those are raps that I wrote since I've been doing okay. rap. Because I was definitely going to ask you know that. What are those mean? your actual lyrics? That's or that my was... actual okay, lyrics from, and I started. How many years worth of lyrics you think that was? I started rapping when I was seven years old. I'm 26. Damn. Damn. So from that whole little window right there, I always wanted to capture that. You know what I mean? Nothing says element better than that. Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. So you kept all the raps I keep from, from all when of you them. was seven years old? I keep all That's of them. That's 19 years, bro. I keep all That's of them. That's dope as fuck. I keep all of them because it's just like, and then in this time and age when everybody, you know, go to the studio and they punch in and they, they do the freestyle, that's cool. You know, that's an art. What I like about that approach is that is, um, that's, that's ad-libbed. You know, it's just straight off the top, straight to the point. It's unrehearsed. You know, like, it's just natural. It come like that. But what I like about still writing is I can actually see everything that I'm saying. It's like, imagine taking something out of your head, right? And writing it down and being able to look back at it. And, like, for me, that's, like, one of the dopest processes because, like, yeah, it's a whole process of recording and doing a video and putting it out, but I think it's dope when you, that whole process of writing it, you know, and you looking at it, and it's like collection, you know what I mean? I like to collect them, you know, so that's why I keep all of them. I've been through moments where I was just like, I've, I've, like I said, that dry spell when I'm like, I don't feel motivated, and I've thrown it away, you know, but I never left it, you know, I, I always went back to get it, like, I always made sure I kept it with me, and it kept it close to me, because like, one day, I'll tell you a secret, one day, I always think about when when I am establishing everything, I would like to publish that. Pub, publish that just like Tupac did, uh, "Rose from a Concrete." Shit. Yeah, that's dope. Like as I would like to do that, you know. Like so, that's why I keep them and I write them, you know, because I can do the whole. I can go in and I can punch in. I can do all of that too. You feel me? But like I like to write it, and I like to. It, as far as writing goes, though, like I'll write in my notepad sometimes. Like if I'm not, if I don't have like pen and, mm -hmm. and paper, but it really depends on how I'm feeling at the moment, you know? So if I write it on on the paper, I usually really get deep and really into yeah. it versus when I write it on my phone, I get distracted because mm -hmm. I got Facebook and I got Instagram yeah. and I'm getting text messages. So I, if I can write it on the paper, that's my always my preference to do it, you know? Uh, so that day when we was doing the video, I'm like, bro, we got to get all of this, you know. Like obviously, I didn't pour, I didn't put all of it down, but mm -hmm. it was a large, po it was a large portion, and just know it was a lot more than that, <laughs> you yeah. know. Like you talking about uh, five subject notebooks worth of of raps, like over the years, folders and all thick of these ass things. Notebooks in case y'all can oh, yeah, get that yeah, visually. Yeah. That's where you got your science in that oh, bitch, yeah, your yeah. math, your reading in that yeah. bitch. So you <laughs> just had like different chapters of your life. Yeah, in that for sure. Like that's what it is. It's just um, documenting my life through my words, you know. And another thing, like when we was doing the video that day, like even down to the outfit, right? Like. I'm wearing red and black, right? Red and black are my favorite colors. So all of that went into the headspace of like, all right, I want to showcase all of this, you know, down to, you know, like me wearing a Tupac shirt, you know, like and having my hair out and all of this, you know what I mean? So all of that went into the headspace and just me really like being up into the camera, playing the camera, like yeah. I want you to hear me, like look yeah. at me, you know what I mean? And know that I'm serious when it comes to this, you yeah, know what it, I mean? Yeah, it was a lot of lyrical aggression, like just watching you visually yeah. attack every bar. Yeah. It's like aside from hearing it, you could see it. In your body language and sure. your facial expressions, in the way that you was just like, just dauntless For at, sure. atta gratitude, at attacking gratitude. that camera and letting people see you. Yeah, uh, it was a, a real kind of gritty feel to it. Yeah, yeah. How, how did y'all go about picking that location? Did you have it already in mind? Did y'all scout or? Um, like the original place, like we had some difficulties with, you know. So like we went scouting that day. We had to come with a plan B. Yeah. But what I liked about that That's place, a dope -ass plan yeah, B. like what I liked about that place, like a lot of sometimes he will help me like find a location, like Mac. Like he will help me find a location, you know, because he he a video videographer, so he know places to go places, and all yeah. of that if I don't necessarily do. So that day, like, we needed a, a place on the fly. So when we got there, one thing I liked about it, it's just, like, one of the things that it really uh, displays, too, is underground. It shows, like, an underground feel because if you think about it, lyrical, technical rap is the underground yeah, now. Yeah, especially today, You know today, what I mean? Yeah. You feel me? Like, so that's one of the biggest things that it showcased, too. Like, and it's cool that this is underground. You know, it's people down here listening to this, too. You feel me? Like, like this this wasn't intended to be a mainstream song. And then another thing, too, um, if you look at 
the video when I'm sitting in the corner, right? One of the dopest things about that, and I caught this after the fact, it resembles how my old room used to look. You know, the walls, the paint all messed up a little bit yeah. and it's old and they all scratched up a little bit. You know, like, we, we was kids, you know, like, mm -hmm. so the walls is all messed up, but it looked like how my room used to look. And when I used to be sitting there on the bed and I'm rapping and I got these papers everywhere, so <laughs> that was dope. It, it brought me back to that place when I was looking at it, the, the finished product. So, yeah, like, like I said, all of that went into the headspace of it, like, down to what I was wearing. And like the just the coordination with the like I say the red and the black you know even down to the shoes like all of that yeah. played into element you know what I mean like if I'm not mistaken the graffiti and shit was red too red right? yep the that's lighting was rough. red that's raw the lighting was red I even peeped that yeah um bro yeah so like thinking like how we we referenced earlier some of the elements of hip hop um, in its early origins was like to be you know one of the most lyrical motherfuckers it was like about your bars, it was about where you was from, it was about your crew. Yeah. So in regards to the video, why did you choose to shoot it solo? Um, Because that one was about me. You know what I mean? That was strictly put, that one was about me. That was about Lil Sam. That was about Samuel, Sammy D, like people who knew me growing up. Iceman, you know, that was my name when I was growing up. So, like, it was just like, that's what that represented. You know, like, I got videos where I'm around more people and I got more of my homies with me and everything. But, like, that one was supposed to be, this is about Sam, strictly to the point about that. You know what I mean? Like, you know, because I see a lot of, um, and not to give a knock to anybody, but, like, I see a lot of videos with guys, like, it's a song about them, but they got a whole bunch of, people around them you know what i mean like sometimes when it's about your story it has to be focused mm -hmm. when especially when you telling it from your perspective you know what i mean it has to be like centered on you you know what i mean like so that's that's the mindset with that so how, how do you um continue to push the bar for yourself lyrically um and i ask that because even listening to just this one track and i have referenced some of the other music you sent me also um it's so many fucking bars. Right. It's so many metaphors. It's so many. Even I caught a couple double entendres in that motherfucker. Yeah. So when you moving forward and you working on new music, how do you continue to polish your talent and, and just push forward, just push the envelope? Um, the biggest thing with that, like I would say, like how I stay pushing and stay getting sharper is just like I, a lot of times I listen to my old music too. You know what I mean? I, I go back and listen to old music that I did, and I was like, oh. Have I said this or have I haven't said this before? And I would listen like, all right, I already used that or I used this flow before or I tried this bar before. A lot of times what, what drives me is like creating like new bars. You know what I mean? So what I mean by new bars is like it's a lot of things that's overused. You know what I mean? Like so I want to try to see. I might watch a commercial and be like, how can I flip that into a bar, right? Or I might see a word like I was just telling my girl the other day, like I was looking at the word Chick-fil-A, right? How can I flip that into a bar? I have to sit on it a little bit. I haven't thought about it completely yet, but some type of flow scheme wordplay, I will figure out how to do that. And it, that's just to give you a gist of how I look at things and I look at words and I look at references because everything becomes at my disposal so I can put into my music. So that 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 bring me to to one of the bars I had in mind. You say, uh, I think it, I'm a rapidy rap nigga, rabbit hippity hopping all over this way. Yeah. What the fuck do that mean, bro? Because I took a couple things away from that. So I want to know what what, what 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 was you thinking when you? Yeah, were like bar? me, like I wanted people to be able to do, <laughs> with that with like a lot of people comment on that one, but like uh, me when I did it, like I wanted to do that flow pattern. You know what I mean? Because if you watch the beat switch right there. Like, dun, dun, dun. so I wanted it to sound like I'm a rapidy rap nigga rabbit. I'm hopping, hopping as rap, I'm, rap. I'm, I'm as I'm rapping it. You know, like the beat go dun, 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 and I'm hopping on it. You know what I mean? I'm a rapidy rap nigga rabbit, hippity hopping all over the whack shit. You know what I mean? So I'm just like in this moment, this form that I'm in right now with with what I'm saying to you, I'm jumping over all of this shit. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like I'm jumping over everything that I deem, in my own opinion, as whack. You know what I mean? Type and shit. like. 
It's like that's one of the oldest flows you could think about, like that whole ibbity hop. Because like if you think about it, I heard one of the oldest one rap hip hop songs of like the seventies, like the hip hop. Curtis the hip, Blow. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean. So like I wanted to take that and put my own twist on it. Like you know what I mean. Just that little segment though. You know what I mean. Not that whole thing. Just that little segment and build a rhyme off it. You know, because a lot of people be like, wait, what did you just say right there? And like that's what it mean. I'm a rap nick. I'm a. They call it rapidity rap. You know. When guys like me and the guys who do the lyrical or technical rap, they call it rapidity rap. So I'm telling you, yes, you damn right. I'm a rapidity rap nigga. You know what I mean? I'm a rabbit. So I'm hopping on all, all this, this shit, shit, killing it, um, that, that I think is whack. So that's what that's what that shit meant right there. That's yeah. what's up. So the last question I want to ask you, now that we got to know um, a lot about this particular song, which at the, the video is at like a little bit over 7,000 7, views. You dropped yeah, it about yeah, two yeah, months yeah, ago. Yeah, so that's yeah, pretty yeah, dope for yeah. an independent artist. Uh, what do you want the people to know about Sammy D? Um, Sammy D is an underdog, right? Sammy, Sammy D is uh, very expressive and someone who uses the art as a way to give you my perspective on the world that I see when I open my eyes every day. The name Sammy D itself, what a lot of people don't know, a lot of people ask me about the spelling, you know, like, but it actually is an acronym for songs songs or stories about my everyday experience emphasized. You know what I mean? So, like, Sammy D is basically just telling his truth, living his truth, a kid from Chicago, right, east side Chicago, south shore neighborhood, you know, and everything that I experienced as I've been on my journey in my 26 years. So, like, when you listen to my music, I just, wanna, I just want you to come on a journey with me, you know, like, Whatever song you come across by me, whether it's a rapidy rap song or it's a more melodic song or it's more conscious, whatever, because, like, I got it all mixed in there, you know? So, like, I just want you to come on a journey when you listen, you know? Like, put your biases aside. If you don't like it, you don't like it. I understand that, you know what I mean? Because, things, like I said, again, everything is subjective. But come on a journey with me, you know, and I'll take you through my mind, literally. Because the, the beautiful thing about rap and, and writing these things were once in your mind before, and now they are physical. They're words that you see on the paper and you're hearing, and they're being thrown back to you, and the energies when you're in the studio recording them and hearing these things like, damn, I just, I was, that started as a thought. You know what I mean? That started as a thought. Now I'm hearing this shit being played back to me. Like, I want you to hear that. I want you to feel that. I want you to be able to, and one thing, this is another thing I like. I like videos to songs, you know what I mean? I think videos are dope. But one of the most beautiful things you can do before you even watch a video, right, to a song, listen to it with your clo with your eyes closed, right? So let, let it take you where that song takes you, right? It's just like when you read a book, right? For sure. When you read a book and it don't have no pictures, none of that shit, right? You, your mind is taking you to a place that is created on its own in its own reality just for reading the words or hearing the words if it's an audio book, right? So what the what the author of that book may have attended, you may be getting something completely different completely from that. Completely different. You know what I mean? Like, so that's what I want to be with my music. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I do videos and, you know, because another thing about humans, like we like something we can look at, especially in this day and age, mm -hmm. you know, with, with social media and content and videos and TikToks and everything, but still, Get that experience of enjoying music without a video. You could just put some headphones or even just let it play out through your speakers or something, wherever you consume your music at. And, like, just try that shit. Like, just come on the journey with me. Like, you know what I mean? Like I say, I'm just a kid from Chicago with a super passion to rap. You know what I mean? Like, with this as being the one thing that has given me all my confidence. You know what I mean? Like, growing up introverted, you know, I was a shy kid, so this was the one thing that brought me up out of there doing, like, open mics and, you know, going to open mics and doing showcases, and everybody wants you to rap in class, and if you don't rap, you whack, you know, so they calling you on the spot. On the spot. Yeah. So, like, that that's that's the basis to me, you know what I mean? Like, that that is the basis to Sammy D, you that's feel sure. me? Yeah. Sammy D, it was dope having you on Decode. Sure. Uh, tell the people where they can find you on social media and also where they can stream and watch your video and the song for Element. For sure. Uh, you can find me on Instagram under uh, Sammy D, S-A-M-E-D-E-E -E -E underscore. That's my uh, Instagram. Uh, you can find me on any streaming platform, Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, YouTube, whatever you uh, use to consume your music under uh, Sammy D as well, S-A-M-E-D-E-E. -E -E. 
Uh, the name of the song that we are breaking down right now is Element. You know, so that's on everything. Go get that as well. Go get that for the Whip project as well. Like because that goes into the uh, transition of the whole pr uh, project itself. So I definitely uh, say go cop that for the Whip again. Uh, on all streaming platforms.